Yes, good morning, good morning, good morning, those viewers. Yeah, good morning, all viewers, and uh, this is Breakfast in Africa, the one and only program, the, o on the only pan African television in the world and in Uganda. You're welcome. And as usual today, a different person, you know, I normally change, 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 change. So this time around, I've brought someone different, and you like to watch this, and you love this. This is something different. Please get a pen and paper and get to note some things that are going to happen here, that you're going to listen to, that you're going to, you know, gossip this time around. As usual, it's Jingo Kalule on the microphone and on your TV station, in your sitting room, and uh, with someone here very different. Let her introduce herself, then we can kick on. Hello, good morning. My name is Ruth Nabagereka Sebagereka, and I am a Ugandan inventor born in Kenya, and I live between Kenya and Uganda, and very honored to be here this morning. Wow, Nabagereka Sebagereka. Yes, sir. What does that mean, Nabagereka Sebagereka? Because Sebagereka, I think, is a man, then Nabagereka. How did you manage to, how did you get <laughs> such names, really? I was uh. given them when I was about three years old. When okay. I was um, baptized, those were the three names I was baptized with. Nabagereka, Sebagereka. And I was um, given them through my paternal line. Uh, yeah. And, I, I, and I, I was not the one who chose them. Yes. I believe you are an African. You were Ugandan. Yes. You were, you were Muganda. Yes, and my mother... You were uh, Muganda? My, yes, my late mother uh, was a Munyankole. Right. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's nice to meet you on TV Africa. And I know our viewers are really ready to re listen to what you're saying. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, what have you been doing? Where are you, where are you coming from right now? Okay, well, I live in Nairobi, Kenya. Nairobi, and Kenya. And I've lived there pretty much for the last 10 years. Okay. Mainly because I've been working in the innovation sector. Innovation sector. And the, um, there's a, a unit that uh, really works and engages directly with inventors. Okay. And takes your product, your idea, to to help you to develop it. So that's what I've been focusing mm -hmm. on and networking with the whole ecosystem mm. of innovation there, mm. and in Uganda as well. But um, f currently in um, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. But I was speaking with your colleague. We're networking to Lagos. Surely. So um, God willing. We too will be Pan African, following in your footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. What 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 led to that push? That push to in, in inverters because people run to different sectors, but you you're looking at, you know. Yeah. Um. I actually was in the U.S. for studying for my um college degree. Yes. And I wanted to return to Africa yes. to 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 um to tell a different story of Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, people say that all the time, but. I was not feeling that I was being validated in the United States. Surely, so I, yeah. I, I came back and I wanted to do things which validated me and my mm. ancestors mm -hmm. and see a long line of continuity. I did not believe that I was only valid because X, Y, and Z person mm -hmm. said mm -hmm. I am valid. But I wanted my validity to be an unbroken line mm -hmm. from my ancestors. When, when, when you look at that the word that you said, val validity, yes. yeah? uh, you were in the United States, yes. you were in Uganda. Yes. Uh, how, how do you compare that validity with the United States and, and, and Uganda? Because we believe that uh, those people in the United States, they feel we as Africans, we as a black man, you know, we don't have what it takes. Yes. They, they, the way they look at us. Yes. How did you find that? Well, I think that the modern age is based on money. Yes, yes, and, yes. And um, much as uh, countries in Africa, up and down Africa, maybe except for Ethiopia, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. were colonized, it was for money. You know, mm -hmm. co col colonization is, um, is, is a, a merchant, a trade system. Mercantilism is mm -hmm, the you know, mm -hmm, other way. Mm -hmm. So the modern age is, is definitely one based on trade. And mm -hmm. if we are seen as either people to be used as factors of production in the mm -hmm. United States mm -hmm. or people to be um, to, to, to be visited for taking uh, raw materials mm -hmm. from Africa mm -hmm. then certainly that is our status within a system which is trade-based 
And is this correct? Far from it. With your inversions, do, do they look at them as key, you know? Do they have the fact that you're a black woman? Do they look at them and really value them? Yes, yes. Currently, my market is African American. Mm. And the product itself has a function because it's, it's, it's a product, it's a physical product. Mm, mm, mm. At the same time, it has a function of easing a lot of pain of the negative and stereotypes that they have received mm. about Africa and to be able to see, to negate a lot of the messages that Africa is fill in the blank, but the mm. blank is always derogatory, n negative. So now they have a product that actually cancels that. When was your kickstart of invasions? Okay. Um, I would actually say two things. Yes. One was I wanted to study psychology at PhD level. Surely. But my professor said, okay, before you actually get your PhD, you're going to have to invent a lot of the tools to study the brain chemistry because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's such a new neuroscience. Mm. It's such a new field that before you have all these electrodes or whatever in the brain to mm. do, you know, the data, you are going to have to invent the machine the tool because it's not there. So then I, I decided to um, back away because I wasn't interested in, in the in, machine. Yeah, at that point. So, but I think the seed was planted, okay, so I, I need to invent something uh, somewhere in the back of my mm -hmm. mind. Then some years later, when I wanted to see what to do after my first degree, mm. I wanted to come, I decided that Africa was going to be my home, not the United States. Sure, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and um, I mean, Africa is so beautiful, and and there's so right. much wealth which exists. Mm -hmm. So 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 yeah, so certainly. So um, now now to 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 return to to the point of the, point. the yeah the, the next step. So so the second reason is that I wanted to come to Africa, but my Africa, not the Africa based on yes. the modern, modern view. Yes. yes. So, so I would have to invent my Africa to myself, not, not how it's presented in the news, in the Western, mm. you know, but exactly what you're doing here and mm. even walking into your reception of, of your studios and Surely. all the information. That, that, that's my Africa. Your Africa, yes. not the one they portray, you know. Yes, yes. So, 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 so I needed that and that um, form informed my decision to, um, first of all, I was making um, cosmetics, like from sheer butter and things like that. So that, that's, that's your invasion, the first invasion you made? Yes. It was my, about my, cosmetics. Yes, my, my, my thought process was in that direction. Was okay. I was mixing you know, oils and sheer butter. And then oh, after- that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Then I decided to look at- um, That was which year? Which was that? Oh my goodness, it's been a journey. It's been a long journey. Um, I started doing that in 94. Wow! Yes, <laughs> ninety-four. <laughs> yes, the, the time. The with, time. With how many years? So, uh, how many years did you have by that time? Um, I'm fifty-two. You're fifty-two. So yeah, you so were. People say I don't look it. You don't look at all. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. So, um, but then again, that's also the processed food. I think I know. the 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 natural the natural food is better for the mm -hmm, body cells mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. all the, the chemicals. So, um, yeah. So, so it's certainly uh, been a long journey. So you started with that. that that uh, Jessalyn butter, the yes, butter, yes, it? absolutely. And I wanted to use um, herbs, traditional herbs. I yes. used to get herbs and dry them and put them in the garage. My mother said, You're a witch wow. doctor, surely. That's what <laughs> they're they're just drying, mm -hmm. you know. And um, that's fine, you know, call me what you mm -hmm. like, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't, it, was, it didn't bother me. Mm. So, um, so, 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 as, as, and my grandmother, I've spoken to my grandmother, my grandmother was not. Um, uh, 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 she was not Eurocentric. She was not somebody who thought that, oh, Africa is now saved because the outsider has visited us. She, the, the she was not impressed. That, that genesis of getting the leaves and putting them in garage and yes, dry them. Yes. Where did you get that passion? Uh, I, I, I think that I was just... Were you looking up to someone, you know? No, no, mm. I wasn't. I, I think that I looked at the, the, the definition of myself as an African. As an African. And I rejected what I was being told. Yes, so I yes. decided to go on a different path. That's beautiful. Yeah. So after the, 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 the Jessalyn, how did, did you drop it out and started something else? I, I did. Then or are you I still worked, doing it? 
Right now, it's on hold. <laughs> it's on hold right yeah, now, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Then I moved into organic agriculture. That's beautiful. Yes, um, because I, 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 I do believe we have to watch the chemicals in our food and all these things. And our farm is still there? Uh, uh. <laughs> no, no, I, no I, I work for um, the national organization here yes, in Uganda yes, yes, for yes. organic agriculture, Nogamo. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I work there in international marketing, but with the farmers as with well. farmers as well. And um, the training department, they had about five departments. So I've been international marketing, there's the farming, then um, training the farmers. Mm -hmm. So, so, so like that, yeah. So, so you went for agriculture, yes. then after? After agriculture, but in between agriculture, not in between, but at the same time, I had this idea at the back of my mind. After you had it before? Yes, the, the relationship is through the, um, the herbs and the shea butter and the hair oils. Yes. I was also making hair oils. I was looking at the structure of the comb and I realized that the ordinary comb was disturbing the, the hair itself. So as you were combing, you were actually debilitating, you were hurting the hair in some way. Mm -hmm. So then I started to look at the structure of the hair mm -hmm. and I realized that the actual comb we're using, the normal Afro comb, mm -hmm. was actually not. Because I'm so surprised, you're talking about a comb. Yes. As well as you you you're shaving off your hair. Yes. And you know, it's really controversial because I expected you to have, uh, you know, that inversion of the comb yes. and you have a lot of hair in yes, yourself. Yes, H yes, yes. How do you... Okay. How that comes about is because it has to be a, a process. Yes. This is the first reinvention of the Afro comb in coming to 6,000 years. The oldest comb is from 3,500 BC. 3,500 BC. Yes. And there is actually an exhibition in um, Fitzwilliam Museum at the University of Cambridge mm -hmm. outlining the history of the African, African comb. comb yes. yes. And I've interacted with the curator, the lady who organized that exhibition. Yes. We, we, we've interacted. And um, of course, she's very interested in, in this. This one. Yes. And so, so because the structure of the Afro comb has not changed, the in structure of the Afro comb. Yes, in 6,000 years. Mm. So I had to start from the beginning. And the beginning means short hair and to demonstrate the design principle. So I started mm. with hair actually your length. Okay. <laughs> and then as I um, grow my hair, I develop different designs. Designs of the comb. Exactly, exactly. Why in all things comb? Uh, it was... Because I was working with the hair oils. Oh, the yes. hair, the and oils and all yes, that. Yes, yes, mm. yes. And, and you know that um, barber shops, hair salons, mm -hmm. it's also mm -hmm. commercial. Is there, sure there's is. so many barber shops and, you know, hair salons. So mm. you also have to, to look at the market. Mm -hmm. and, and is that an investment decision? Because as an innovator, you have your idea. And then the innovation cycle is going to take you from the conceptualization and as you journey you're going to meet different people you're going to interact with labs you're going uh. to interact with other inventors you're going to interact with the media you're going to interact with investors so it's a whole ecosystem uh, uh, uh. until god willing you have enough of you enough inventors and then you impact on gdp so that would be <laughs> You're still watching TV Africa, The Right to Know, and uh, it's breakfast in Africa. Today we're talking about our comb, and the inventor is here, talking about the African comb, talking about, you know, you have a lot to learn. Just get your paper as we go for our break, then we shall come back and tell you about this comb. Welcome back from the break. As usual, Jingo Kale, still talking about our comb with Nawagereka Is it yes. Nawagereka yes. <laughs> yes. Very, very interesting. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we're still talking about this comb and you're telling me how the 6,000 years ago yes. the comb was existing, you went and made some invasions and all that. Yes. Uh, when I look at uh, here in Uganda, we have tried to make invasions and people have come up with cars, 
uh, things have not they have not succeeded yeah. people have come there, there is something called uh, value addition yes which is also there yes. things people are trying to add up things and things are not working out yes how did you manage isn't it a lot of money to make uh, to have come up with an invasion and to reach a stage where it is functioning uh well, I think that um, I'm going to answer your question in two ways. Surely. I think that um, the inventions that we make in Africa would impact on our GDP, finally. Mm. The cars or value addition through mm. exports and um, through, through, through trade and all these things. Mm -hmm. So for, for them to work, there are different um, things that have to be put into place. And that would bring me to the um, Global Competitiveness Report, which is given annually by the World Economic Forum, and it measures 12 pillars for each country, 141 countries in the world. Mm. Business dynamism, innovation capability, things like that. So these criteria are education, level mm -hmm. of health. In, in Uganda, you know, malaria is impacting on people's health, so, so, so their productivity, and all these mm. criteria, they, they all go towards making a competitive nation. And I think that we, we do have to look at these things deeply mm. as, 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 as um, people who want to, to, to as grown-ups. We do have to be able to look at the 12 pillars and see how are they informing our children's future. Mm. And if something is not working, let us look at the, the innovation capability. What, what are the hubs? Are they there, you know? Mm -hmm. What is going on in the schools? Are the clubs there? What is going on in the education sector? Does the curriculum allow people to be independent thinkers? These things are, 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 are they're, they're stepping stones. So the curriculum should, should, should direct them to that? Oh, yes, 100%. They, you have to be a free thinker. You have to think independently. Mm -hmm. You have to, 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 to have the, the, the confidence that actually what I'm thinking is correct, despite the naysayers, despite the haters, you know, haters gonna hate. You, know? <laughs> you just have to keep going. Endurance. You you have to have the, the 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 character, and you have to have the support system because sometimes you, you're going to cry. It's going to hurt. <laughs> sometimes, I mean, you know, it, it's going to be very difficult. Sometimes it's going to be um, challenging. And if you don't have your your people, your church, your whatever, and the the, the mountain to climb becomes impossible then you're blocked mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you have to dig deep and and, and keep going so uh, that, that that that's the other part now for for the the yeah there, there, there are many things because uh, uh, i'm really i'm really surprised and you know i'm broken speechless because uh, i look at a model i look at an inverter have you tried modeling before I, I did. You yes. see, <laughs> I can see it in you. You know, <laughs> in, in college, viewers can really in, in, prove that. You did that. Yes, in, in college in the US for a really? little bit. Yes, you were yes. modern in the US for a little bit. Then yes. you had to drop it out and come to the side. Yes, yes, that that's. Enough. I really want to go deeply into Please. this this this. Yes. Com. Yes. Is it for female? For men? Anyone? For anyone, it, for anyone, yes. And I do uh, say it's for adults. So I, because I'm developing one for children, which is so much kinder to the head. This because why the, is it that this is for children and for uh, adults? What, what makes that? Uh, it would be the scalp because the baby, mm -hmm, the baby mm -hmm, scalp. Mm -hmm, so, yes, yes. So yes, sensitive. But this is um, very good for short hair for mm -hmm. your viewers who are familiar with. The, going to the barber shop and mm. requesting which size the barber should use mm -hmm. is for size 2 to 2.5. So when you get your hair cut, you can use it for the haircut. No, no, no. When you get the haircut, yes. you use it for combing. Yes. It's for combing. Yes. It's just combing? Does it have any magic in the combing or anything yes. like that? Yes. It, it, it has a back platform behind the teeth. Yes. And this back platform smooths the cuticles. Yes. Now each hair strand, if, if, now if you imagine that this is one hair strand. Yes. And it's a microscope. Now each hair strand has tiles, like yes, yes. They're, they're cuticles, excuse me, like the tiles on the roof of a house. Now they have to be kept flat and closed. This is the only comb in the world, you know. Forget, in the world? Yes. Forget about China, forget about um, North America, forget about 
you know, anywhere, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Australia, which can go through the hair and smooth the cuticles through this back platform. And what the beauty of that is that moisture content is retained in the hair strand. Light can reflect off the hair strand. Mm -hmm. And because it happens in seven layers, if you have different hair strands being aligned, yes, then you can get a wave pattern, like you know, on your hair. Yes, like the wrappers, you know, Nelly. Yes, you know, th that's my main market currently because they can see your main target and market is for those people the Nelly, the what? Yes, at 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 the moment, at the moment. Wow. Yes, but we have a range. We're going to have. That means uh, it's very expensive. I'm getting scared. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't get scared. We try and, and, and yes. have it in your hands at um, in dollars because it's US. So you can make a pattern in this hair. It can. It can. Your hair would be a, need to be a bit longer. A bit but, longer. But even with that hair, yes, that length. It yes. makes a, a little pattern. Yes, 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 sir. Yes. Those ones like for Asia. Yes, 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 absolutely. Okay, yes, yes. so beautiful. Yes, yes. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. And, wow. and my, my, um, my customers in the, the US, they love that they're getting it from Africa, and it, it, it's very soothing, especially during this time of Black Lives mm -hmm, Matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's very soothing, even um, you know, people in the UK, but primarily in the US, because these are young men who are, are um, they, they're living in a society where they are, feel they're not um, valued. What, what, what challenges have you found in this invasion? What, what? Okay, um, the challenges I will again answer <laughs> two ways. Yes, surely. Institutional challenges. Do we have enough hubs? Do we have media who tell our mm -hmm, stories mm -hmm, as innovators? Mm -hmm. The innovation sector is a sector that is um, misunderstood and it's actually, it's not a mainstream sector as yet. Wow, it's not mainstream, but I'm so surprised of making, your market is running the side of Nelly, Ashanti, what? Yes, and you're an African. Yes. Let's, let's hope they really admit that we really have something better. Absolutely. Because those people, when they look at our, 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 our things, they yes. feel, <coughs> African, yes. African. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. But at least they have appreciated yours yes, so far. Yes, they've, they've embraced me and I'm very grateful for that. Yes. yes. You're still watching TV Africa and the right to know and it's breakfast in Africa. We're talking about the comb, the African comb from Navagreka, Savagreka. Let's come back and then we can watch the second, the third episode of the comb. Welcome back from the break. It's Jingo Kale, and uh, hey, my colleague, my inventor, Navagirika, Savagirika. <laughs> uh, that thing really surprises me, and uh, I really get overwhelmed. Uh, we are talking about this comb right now, yes. and uh, I, I really look at Uganda. Uganda yes. has got a lot of challenges about innovators. Yes. People have made. Uh, look at hubs. Mm. People have made hubs. People do different things. Yes. And uh, even our people here, our Ugandans, mm. they don't appreciate them. Yes. Why? Why do you think that is like that? Uh, I think that it's um, through the last history of the last maybe mm -hmm. 200 years mm -hmm. where we don't see ourselves, uh, where, where the outsider has come to our, our region and made these countries these borders which we didn't make mm -hmm. and then they came with their own narrative which is not our narrative and the reward system was based upon if you took up the narrative the and they, yes which 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 um put which denigrated the african so but you got rewarded that's where you got the jobs that's where you got the big houses mm -hmm. that's where you got you know and then the people in society who had the big house who had this they were the ones who, who, who were being rewarded by the outsider. And so it, it impacted, I be, in my opinion, in my humble mm. opinion. So, so then, uh, because of course, they could not come and colonize a country. Mm -hmm. Or I think there's a saying that uh, something about you cannot cal colonize a mind that is free. Or Surely, something. yes. Yeah. So, 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 the, so, so the stories had to be um, taken out, the ones mm -hmm. of the positive African. And so the buyer sees everything African as bad, 
because it's been going on for 200 years. But it can be reversed. Anything can be When did you come back to Uganda? Um, 94. And then yeah. I left again, and then I came back like that, like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. So during this coronavirus period, uh, yes. remember our president was telling us that we should uh, run to production. Yes. That we can produce everything that we want yes. here in Uganda. Yes. Do you think it is possible for Uganda to sustain its, itself in production and fail to go to other countries? No. Um, not You're not this. ready for that? No. Uganda can produce something in the supply chain, but not every country is going to be self-sufficient because mm -hmm. with economies of scale what i i really feel we need to to have respect a global village mm -hmm. but respect each other and um uganda can produce some things but i don't think we're going to produce it doesn't make economic sense to produce buttons mm -hmm. toothpaste cars everything everything mm -hmm. you know tv cameras not everything but certainly we have to move to produce more things. I, I'm, not per, I'm not a fan of this new way of speaking that each country now has to become, you know, scared of the other. The other and, yes. and no, I think we have to, as, as we have to come together, but mm. I think that um, production in Uganda can reach levels that, that are, are perhaps inconceivable right now, I, I, 100%, I know. What you. advice could you give to the Uganda innovators? What advice? I, I would say that believe that you can do better than anybody else in the world. Believe that you are the world leader in your, in your craft. Believe that. What's the name of this innovation? This is called the Truth Comb. Truth. And the truth comb, yes, we, we try and tell the truth. <laughs> the <laughs> truth about the hair, the truth about every innovation. And we are the, the comb for curls. We are specific in the comb, in the curl market. 